Hi there and welcome to Andy Robinson RC. Cheers for checking out the channel today and uh, thanks for joining us. Okay, on this episode we are doing a bit of a collection review at the start of the new year, which is 2022. So if you remember uh, last year we did another one, we went through the collection of cars we had in 2021, so I thought we'd follow suit. So I've dragged out pretty much all of the cars that I've got, bar a few, and we're going to go and have a uh, look at them. So we'll start doing that now. Okay, so we'll start. I'm going to get up. And we'll start on the front row here. And we've got there, that is the Tamiya Striker, which I think most of you have seen by now. And that was finished off um, at the late part of 2021. So we did a, a custom job with that. And it's got the Grasshopper 2 um, Black Edition wheels. It's got TTO 2B um, white CVAs fitted. And it's got the Sonic Fighter front shock tower. And again, it's got um, a black motor guard. And it's got a black rear wing and it's got custom MCI decals. Okay, moving on here. We've got what I absolutely love racing at the minute. Uh, this is my uh, 2021 Mardave Cobra Eco. And um, I've been uh, running that lots. Or, well, I say lots. As much as I can in between having uh, lockdowns and various things. But currently... Um, I'm doing rather well with it in the Blackpool and Files uh, Vintage Championship. So I've uh, been enjoying running that. It handles so well. Um, so yeah, very pleased with that. Absolutely love driving that car. And uh, moving on to another Mar Dave. This was uh, featured again earlier in the year. Well, probably sure about April or May. But that is a Mar Dave Mini 50. So there's only about 50 of these cars in the world. Uh, Mardave did a limited run of 50 Mardave Minis to celebrate 50 years of Mardave. And uh, that's one of the 50. That's number 19. And if I get a little bit closer, this one's fitted with a uh, carbon chassis. And chassis set, as you can see there. So yeah, and uh, you can't see it because the shell's on, but in uh, on the chassis plates... Um, and pieces there is a 19 uh, etched into it to uh, donate um, to know it's a number 19 of 50 okay then moving on here uh, another one I acquired last year now we saw this briefly in a, a, a video we did in the studio and that is uh, an M01 Tamiya M chassis with the Monte Carlo rally body on now, I've still yet to run this. I am hoping to do a video, running video of it. Uh, I am waiting for a couple of things for it. And um, I want to uh, pitch this up against my Tamiya Ford Escort. And I've just realised <laughs> the uh, Tamiya Ford Escort isn't here. I've left one upstairs. Well, that was silly, wasn't it? See, I thought I'd had every car, um, apart from a few in the loft, but... Um, that one's hiding upstairs in my drawer. I might have to get my uh, fantastic assistant to go and get it for me. Evelyn. Now, if you go upstairs, and if you could go into my uh, bottom drawer, can you get the uh, the car out, please, that I've managed to leave in there like a clown? Anyway, moving on. You know, it's all, uh, all professional here. That is, uh, we did this right at the end of 2021, and this is the uh, Tamiya... 45th commemorative anniversary edition of the uh, Tamiya T802 Valent uh, Porsche 934 Coupe from 1976. And I say that's on the T802 um, SW chassis. Absolutely gorgeous. Loving that a lot. I really enjoyed building that. And then if we move along here to the other row. That's the Blockhead Motors Tamiya Wild one. So again, uh, pretty much a kit build, apart from we put um, egress rear tyres on it. 
and we put a car a core rc21 turn motor and 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 uh, just a you know a little cosmetic thing for two there change the numbers on the back so it's sporting my my racing number there which have a few on my a few of on my cars um so yeah absolutely love that for me that is one of my favorite releases of 2021 i think tammy you did such a good job with the blockhead wild one fantastic moving on now this was on the last video this is my rc10 b3 factory team edition now i it doesn't get tons of use but i literally use this um every year at the uh, lakeland classic event and outdoor vintage meet so that's what i use that one for love driving that absolutely fantastic so that's set up for outdoor racing and uh here we've got an rc10 b2 again and now i have got this sorted now i do need to do a running video on it um but i haven't managed to get out and do that yet but it will be coming that's the rc2 uh, rc10 b2 now i say the main difference is on the uh, b2 compared to the b3 is the um you've got the front uh, c hubs are different and uh what else you've got different you've got the wishbones that are different are unique to the b2 and um, the rear wishbones and uh, it's just various things like that shock tower is different that's only got two adjustment holes on the top where the b3 has three of them so just slight differences between the two but essentially they're, they're the same vehicle but b2s are getting hard to find these days so um moving on we've now got the uh this i haven't had on the channel yet this is the um, an rc10 graphite with the uh co composite craft chassis now this has been built up through uh, various uh, well i don't think it's a uh, i think it's been built up through a variety of parts but that's what it is it's got it's not got an associated chassis on it's got a this thing called a carbon uh craft composite chassis um so that's an aftermarket one it's got a b4 shocks all round it's got um carbon fiber shock towers it's running currently b4 tires and wheels um and it's got a custom rear wing on the back as well uh, but i can't wait to get this going i don't know what i'm going to do with it yet no idea so there's the chassis for it so yeah that's all good and then next to it which we filmed recently is the rc10 gold pan again i really like running that it's got a, a 10 turn 10.5 brushless nosram motor in it absolutely love that that is superb that was good fun so yeah uh, really liking my uh, RC10s. Absolutely love driving them. Can't wait to get the um, the Composite Craft RC10 running. I've got to do a few. It needs a few things. It needs a carbon gearbox brace. It needs a, a gear cover for it. Yeah, and uh, I need to change the wheels and tyres out and get some electrics. But can't wait to get that running at some point. Okay, and I'm going to move around here. And then here we've got the uh, the Saint Dragon on the Thunder Dragon chassis, which um, was the last video that we uh, we did. So we just got we did a, a running video and an unboxing recently of that. Absolutely love that as well. Now moving on, this is my favourite car ever that I own. That's my um, Tamiya DTO2 MS Plus. Uh, it's there on the with the sand viper body that was built for the dt challenge when it ran and uh I spent a lot of time on that it's got lots of uh, upgrades really like that car um it gets a little bit of use these days but i don't run it that often i like to keep it as it is now that's how it was when it last raced apart from i did put a new body shell on it but it pretty much looks the same as i replicated the old body shell um but yeah, absolutely love that car. That is fantastic. So uh, that's that one. And then moving on, that is another uh, DTO2 MS. Now that's a standard DTO2 MS. Now basically, I managed to get that at such a great price. I had to have it really. And I, I literally bought it for spares for that one. <laughs> uh, because it was so cheap. It was cheaper to get that car rather than try and hunt down a load of spares. 
So I bought that one. <laughs> and then uh, that's another one there. Now this used to be my mate's, uh, Mark. I bought it, then sold it to Mark. And then Mark raced it at the DT Challenge with me in 2017. And then because he did more work on it and whatnot, and then decided he wasn't going to keep it, I bought it back off him. And then I raced it, did loads of racing with it indoors. So, um, yeah, that's cool. I love that. Uh, lots of uh, fond memories with them. So, yeah, DTO2 is definitely probably my favourite chassis. Nowhere near the best time of chassis in the world, but I really do like them. And then this is a new vehicle uh, to the collection. I don't think I've really shown it before, but I managed to get a Top Force Evo again after unboxing one when they came out. And then I got rid of it. And then I thought, I really do want one. So I sold a couple of things in the end and I decided to get one. Now, I didn't build this one. This one came pre-built. And again, it's something I need to set up. It's not been run. Um, so I need to get some electrics. That'll be something I'll do this year at some point. Right, now for the next one, um, we're going to look at the hoppers now. We've got my uh, my daughter, Evelyn. She's got her hopper there. Do you want to uh, show it? And uh, there we are. So, this is your car, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, do you like it? Yeah. Okay, what do you like about it the most? The unicorns. The unicorns. I thought you might say that. <laughs> it's cool, isn't it? But you you've uh, you run this with me sometimes, don't you? Uh -huh. We like it, don't we? So it's a grasshopper too, and then uh, Evelyn puts a sort of a pink body shell on it and then decorated it with lots of unicorn stickers didn't you yeah and then sometimes you you take that out with me when i've got taking some cars out don't you i've only done it once in fairhaven with you I'm yeah but we've used it outside as well hole. and we took it to the cl car club didn't we as well and you had a little drive on the track in there as well didn't you mm -hmm. so yeah but yeah there you go so that's evelyn's grasshopper too okay do you want to put that back down for me chicken <laughs> Thank you. Right, so we're doing that and then we'll move on. And then, okay, so another release from last year, that's the Tamiya DT-01 uh, Memorial Edition and uh, the RX Fighter Buggy. Like that, enjoyed building that. And again, this one has got, if you can see, it's got the clear gearbox from the limited edition uh, Red Metallic Mad Ball or the very first editions of the uh, Mad Fighter. So I've got the clear gearbox that we put on that. Uh, it's got Schumacher racing tyres and uh, yeah, just uh, just the odd couple of things that we did to it. And, it, and it, I think it's got a core motor as well in there. But yeah, it's a cool thing like that. And then, um, love this, absolutely love this. The uh, Tamiya Jun Watanabe Hornet. Again, incredibly expensive to buy. Now the, the prices are ridiculous on them, but that's the way it is. Uh, but I really do like that. I've only ran it once or twice, mainly because I've not got a spare set of wheels and tyres to bolt onto it so I don't ruin the pink ones. Um, but I will get some at some point because it is a really cool thing. But yeah, so um, liking that a lot. I had one when they first came out and I wish I'd never sold it. So I was really glad to uh, get that one again and restore it. Okay, now next along here, I use this for racing a lot at my club. This is my Tamiya Super Storm Dragon, um, which I put onto a, just a Hornet chassis. Um, so yeah, so that's that one there. I race that every couple of uh, every two weeks at the Blackpool and Fylde Club in the Hornet and Hopper class. Absolutely love that. And then on the opposite, um, next to it is although it's got the candy green uh, shell on, that is my Tamiya Black Edition Grasshopper with the uh, candy green shell the black one is upstairs in the uh in a bag <laughs> but yeah um i like that one a lot that's cool then moving on to the back we've got the awesome clod buster that's a, a vintage um chevy bowtie grill clod buster which we got now i did a video on it i think no it featured i think in a video with the the mini briefly but i've yet to do a proper video on it and the thing is, what I want to do is, um, I want to um, run it against my uh, Teo 
Nissan four wheel drive pickup um, and get that, uh, do a video on that to sort of replicate the race I did when I was younger, which is how I got into liking the Clodbuster so much. Anyways, that's got to come this year. Uh, we also got the Bus Devil Tribute Tamiya quad track on the TTO2 FT chassis. And so that's cool. I've not used that for a bit. I haven't had a chance. Been working on other things. But yeah, I really like that. I am still tempted to get the blue hop-up chassis for this. Just to replicate the blue chassis on the original ORV Bush Devil. But I do like that. It's a bit of an oddball car from Tamiya. So I like that. And then of course, with me being a Land Rover man. I've got my Tamiya CC01 Tamiya Defender. Which uh, is cool. I like that. Now, um, again, they're releasing the Tamiya Defender body on the CCO2, hopefully later this month. So I'm hoping to get the CCO2 as well. I've got plans with that. I'm going to actually alter the body and put a Series 1 Land Rover body on that. That's my project for that. But yeah, so that's coming later on. But again, the, the Tamiya have decided to release the Defender on the CCO2. Now, quite a controversial car at the minute is the Tamiya TD4 Super Avante. And here it is. Um, I've been working on it. It's still in two-wheel drive mode because the blooming front drive shafts keep falling out, which is rubbish. Anyway, um, so here it is. I'll be, I did give it a, uh, a day's racing and I got it to drive uh, quite well by the end of the day. So I haven't given up on it yet, but I still need the universal drive shafts for this. Slip a clutch, I want to do a couple of other things to it. And I probably will get the TD2, I think, now, when that's released later on. Um, now, what isn't here? Now, stupid me, as I said, I do have the Mark II Tamiya Ford Escort on the uh, four-wheel drive MFX01 chassis, however you say it. Now, that is still upstairs because stupid me left it in a drawer and forgot about it. So that's up there. And also... Um, I have got, I didn't bring it down because it's basically a kit in a box. I've got a brand new boxed Tamiya Hornet Supreme Edition. Now, there is a video of that uh, earlier on in the year, if you haven't seen it. And also, basically, got a brand new inboxed kit at a really good price. Came with all the correct electrics. So, that's upstairs in the loft. And, because I can't get to it either, I've still got my Tamiya TRF201 as well uh which is a, a gorgeous bit of kit uh, again that's uh, smuggled away hiding upstairs so there we go so that is the uh, sort of collection overview i'm still waiting hopefully on another buggy to turn up uh, hopefully today um which i'll be doing a video on soon so you'll have to wait to see that one but it's a bit of a, a thing that's probably not seen all the time but there you go. So that is uh, a quick overview of the collection. Okay, now um, I hope you enjoyed the video. It was sort of a, a brief run through of everything, but you get to see what's here at the minute. I'm sure it will change again over this year. Anyway, um, it's just like to say thank you for joining us on the show today. Cheers for checking out this episode. As always, much appreciated. If you haven't already and would like to see them, more content from Andy Robinson RC, then please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the like and notification buttons. And that'd be much appreciated. And uh, we'll see you all soon later on for some more content. Look after yourselves and take care. And we'll see you soon. Bye.